Hey everybody, I am here at peaceful, beautiful, proximal Santa Ana River Lakes with my dear friend, Kerry Gallegas. Kerry, how are you, my friend? Good, my friend. It's a beautiful day out. It is. Um, it's a little foggy, but what the heck? Any day's beautiful for fishing. I know, man. <laughs> you know, sometimes I, when I do my morning briefing, uh -huh. I'll say it's another beautiful day down here. It's overcast <laughs> and it's a little windy, but when you're near what you love, Amen. There's nothing like it. No, amen. Amen. Yeah. It, to, to me, it's a spiritual thing. It's about being one with with nature. Yeah. And, and God to me. So, um, what's the other saying? Uh, a bad day of fishing is better than the best day at work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm blessed now because it is my work now. <laughs> yeah, I know. How lucky can you be, right? And, Carrie, we should let everybody who's watching know we got four rods out right now, right? Correct. So, we may have to interrupt this podcast at some point, at least. We're praying that that's going to be the case. I hope so. We got our dear friend Bob Gifford, and he's studying all the rods, making sure if something gets bit, he'll let us know. Okay. So, one thing that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about several things, but one thing we're going to talk about is catching a big trout. So many people out yeah. there want to catch a big trout. So, why don't you take us through the bait and what pound tests and everything? You're the pro. <laughs> the pro. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the main thing to me is. What I try to share with people, and I, I'm sure you've been through this, even in salt water, um, it's the mood. It's your attitude. And I tell everybody what I share, there's a technique and there's a system, but confidence, I can't express enough how much confidence is the key to everything. And to So me, many pros say that. Yeah, I mean, Guys to, that really know how to fish say that. And, you know, if you go, I tell people, if you're in a bad mood, stay home. Because for some reason the fish just know. I don't know. Don't tell me how. It's a nature. I think it's a nature thing. I, I really do. Yeah. But if you're in a bad mood or something gets you upset, nothing happens until you can revamp, meditate, do something, change your frame of mind, and it's all about joy. Positivity, and joy. It's to me, and 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 I'm going to bring God into this. To me, it confidence. I tell everybody, faith and doubt are a belief. And with that being said, the faith is a confidence. The doubt, it, when you have doubt, boy, nothing really comes together. No, it doesn't. It, it, really, it really doesn't. In anything in life. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. So with that being said, you know, I have a lot of people that try to copy me, you know, carry what color bait are you using, what, you know, what setup. My workshops that I do, I call it how to, how to catch a monster trout. And you do those workshops I here at right here Santa, Santa Ana River, River Lakes. Lakes because... I know no better place that have monster trout. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there are some places spirit and stuff, but I've been coming to this lake for over 20 years now and um, studied it. Um, boy, I tell you, I, I've stayed in the line, trying to be first in line to get a spot, to work that spot, to study that spot and all the spots on the lake. And that alone, I'm telling you, um, a lot of time, a lot of hours. And so with my workshop, what I share with people is I've been fishing since I was three. That's 58 years of experience. Oh, man, that's you and me both. <laughs> and But you can't teach that all in a day. Right. But the system and the technique that I use, you could teach that in a day, but it's all the little things that make the difference of getting the big fish. Yes. And those little things, again, like I said, are everything. Yeah. So um, with that being said, hopefully we could you know get caught, caught up in some. But even if the small ones bite, it's the same technique. It's just... Um, well, I don't know how to say this, but it, 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 I have what I call my big boy rods, and that usually is, is a night crawler, and yes. it's not thrown very far out. That's oh. one of the secrets I'm going to give away well, right now. Well, that's very cool. That's very <laughs> um, cool. Night crawler, close to the beach. Correct. Yes. Inflated. And Light line. Two-pound test line is what I teach all my guys with. You know, everyone says, oh, that's going to break. Oh, it's going to do this. It's just because it's all a myth. If you have the right setup, you got your drag set right. Um, and I'm not here to brag or boast. Um, my biggest on two pound test line is a 20, I think it's 20.1, 20 20.2, a lot of 19s, 18s, 17s. Um, it's, it's never been a problem. Um, back in Corona, I think my record on the biggest fish is like a 35 pound sturgeon. Whoa. It took me over an hour to reel it in. Wow. I'm float you, but that's good fun. So I'm a light line fisherman. Um, I learned a lot of my technique. Uh, by going to the bay, out in Newport Bay, Balboa Bay, yeah. catching calico bass, spotted sand bass, halibut, even small bonita, small barracuda. Yeah. Um, so two pounds is my thing. And here's what I tell everybody. You know, my cousin Pudge, 
anybody, uh, especially when we get older, our sight's not as good. So we're right. tying the hooks and they're saying, I got to go to four pound test line because I can't see the line. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's, if you can't see the line, what about the trout? The trout, I have a hard time seeing it too. Yeah. So with that being said, that's a lot of, a lot of my success is using two pound test line. A lot of people use four, you'll get bit, don't get me wrong. But my system and technique has been proven, well, I can't say over and over again. Um, but for decades, you've been uh, yeah. doing this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, I'll, not that I have it perfected. I don't think you can perfect anything. Um, yeah, you if, keep keep working toward perfection, right? Exactly. You may never get there, but no, I, keep working toward no, it. No, we never will. But uh, to me, it's about learning. And if you stop learning, you're dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, even like in martial arts, one of the things I always say, I'm a child. In my religion with, with Christianity, I'm a child. Once you think that you know everything, you're dead. Absolutely. Uh, life is about learning. And so to me, one of the things I like to share in my class is in Genesis 1, God tells us who he is. He says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. So when you look at that, people don't really understand. So he's telling us, in the beginning, this is where time starts. He created, so he's created, made heaven and earth. Heaven is the space for us to work in. Earth is the matter. So everything on earth here is the matter. Now here's my birthday verse where this comes involved. This yeah. is what I share with everyone. Whether you yeah. believe in God or not, this, this is the parameters. Um, Genesis 1.26, it says, God said, let's make man in our image. And this is where we see the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit first being revealed. Then he says, and then they, then he blessed them. Wow, we are blessed. But with today's world, everything is this and that, that and this, this and that. We, we got to remember, we're blessed. Yep. And with God, it's a kingdom life. And with kingdom life, because it says in there, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Wow, what does that mean? Fruitful and multiply. And then it says, and have dominion, and I love this part, over fish of the sea, <laughs> over the fowl of the earth, the cattle, every living thing. Especially that fish part. Yeah, especially that. And that's the first thing he says. <laughs> yeah. The first disciples were, were Peter and Andrew, and they, they were fishermen. Fishermen, right. So there's a reason for it. And why? Because to me, it's a heart relationship. And the church, fellowship, that's all great. But it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a heart relationship. What does God say? David had a heart after God. So with me, I get a lot of people getting off track here. A lot of people coming to me with jig companies and bait companies. And I'm real honest with them. I say, you know what? Anybody can pour a bait. Anybody can. It's the heart of the person that makes the company. And I will support anybody that has the heart that's that's here for community. To yeah. help, help each other out. Yeah. So with that being said, going back to it. So let's look at that. Time, space, and matter. So God blessed us and said, be fruitful and multiply. Do, be, do, and have dominion. So you know what? It's a kingdom. We're all kings and queens who believe in God. And with that being said, we have dominion over the earth. So if you have that, if you believe in his word, then we are to rule. We are to take care of things. Nature, everything that has it. So here's what it comes down to be do and have so anything that you want in life whatever you want to be let's here comes time the first thing he says in the beginning so you have to do do is time you want to be a good trout fisherman you're going to spend time and you're going to that's absolutely right keep at anything right at anything if you want to be a kobe bryant or a shack you think they got it just from being born with oh, it oh man no yeah i mean so, i know how hard kobe worked i oh. talked to some of his teammates and they work. I mean, he worked. He, he never stopped. Amen. Right. And so even with that being said, think about it. anybody who is a master at their art. They, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, they spend 90% of their time practicing, working out, doing whatever it takes for 10% of game time. Yeah. And so with that being said, even the fishing here, it's technique, it's going, it's doing it, it's doing it, it's doing it. 
and you'll never be perfected, but you'll be above the rest of the people. You start getting closer the more you do it. Right. Yeah. So how about choosing a spot at the lake? I'm new. I'm coming to Santa Ana River Lakes. Do I just, is any place as good as any other? Well, I'll th- and you I'll... can get in all kinds of trouble because if you <laughs> mention a couple of spots, then you're going to have 500,000 people. So how do you pick a spot? Um, well, now that uh, I'm doing this full time, uh, as I'm fishing, I watch what's going around the lake. There are certain spots, Johnny's Corner, the net, the pump house here, which is kind of in the middle of the pump house. Yeah. Uh, the boat dock, the road. Uh, there's all kinds of places, but I'm going to say this right out. The regulars and people that fish this lake are here so early in the morning that it's hard to get some of the top spots. Yeah. Because they're already going to have it. Um, so that's one tip. Get here early. When I, uh, I mean early. In our tournaments? Yeah. We have them on Saturday. People come here Wednesday. Oh, my God. start spending the night. That's early. <laughs> That's for tournaments. Wow. Now, Fridays are our busiest day. Saturday's busy. Sunday kind of sl- goes off a little bit. Um, but for the newcomers here, I would say stay away from Fridays. Uh-huh. Um, it's pretty crazy. And when you have a lot of bait in the water, unless you really know how to fish it, it's kind of hard. Yeah. Um, so I tell people, if you can, fish Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Um, if you have the time so you have a chance to get one of those spots. Um, and even still that technique, power bait, night crawlers, everyone says what color, rainbow works good, chartreuse, garlic scent. Um, I do a little bit of mixtures myself, um, mix several different colors, natural or what they call hatchery pelt with another color, another rainbow color. Yeah. And I've been doing good on that this year. But again, I can't exp- express it's, it's con- excuse me, it's confidence. A lot of it has to do with confidence. Yeah. Um, Depend on the time of year. Like right now, if you have overcast, the water's starting to clear up now from the rain. Um, shorter leader because it's going to push the fish down. How short? Um, right now, for my night crawlers, I'm doing six to eight inches. Okay. On the power bait, probably 12 to 14. And then we mix it up and, and see. But I'm throwing that out a little bit further. That's tied to a swivel? or Yeah. yeah. I do a Carolina rig. Okay. Um, one of the things that I share with people and especially in my classes light um everything light the weight i put a weight a bead a swivel and then we go with the i use just owner hooks number 10 owner hooks okay and a lot of people like to use treble hooks and you can um but the reason why i do single hooks is because then you could change it up you could have a power worm or what we call dead stick of power worm where it floats you could put a mouse tail on it you could do power bait and it was a well power bait stick absolutely Absolutely. So uh, there's reason to my madness for using that single hook. Yeah. Um, it's and you're stuck basic. on that. You've been using that for years. Probably the last 10 years. I used to, when I started out the system about 20 plus years ago, <laughs> I was using the number 20 treble hook. Wow. The smallest that you could use. Yeah. Um, and then I went to an 18, and then recently I've been doing owner hooks. They're lighter. You don't have to put as much bait, cigs on bait. Um, they'll float. Treble hooks, you can do that too, make it light. But um, again, the owner hook to me, uh, hands down, is the best little rod to use. So with that being said, it's just a, uh, I do a lot of what they call bait and weight. You put it out there and you do that. And then I'd, on the side, then I'll be jigging, either drop shotting or, or doing a mini jig. So you got a bait out and then you're mini jigging. You're working, for, yeah. For that and you get a lot of big ones mini jigging. You do? Side. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of jigs are you using? Um... What do you find to be the best? At this lake, uh, you know, something with stock trout, white you s- seems to work the best. Um, my go-to is white, white and yellow. Uh, orange sometimes works. Um, for the most part, white. But um, this is what I tell people. It's the presentation that's critical. Yes. Getting from. But, but color does matter, but it's the presentation. And talk to us about that correct presentation. Well, it, you mix it up, um, especially when it comes to jigging. You, you could do short little bumps. You could do a slower, uh, like a slower lift. So you're kind of dragging it and having it come and then slowly go back down. A lot of people uh, like bouncing the tip really quick. I mix it up and then, and then see what happens and what works. I mean, I've had it where I'm really bouncing the tip a lot and I get struck that way. Yeah. So um, you just gotta play around with it. Um, and jiggings, um, it's something that you just gotta pra- uh, practice. You gotta practice, 
you know, practice, practice. It works different. But what might work here might not work at the river. Might not work, you know, at another lake up in the Sierra. So you're exp constantly experimenting and observing and trying to figure it out. It's a mystery right. that you're trying to right. unravel. Right. right. Yeah. And, and you know, don't. No one technique works 100% of the time. And so, you know, the, another thing, you know, with my course that I share with people is I share with them the difference between the word true and the word truth. And here's what I'm saying. Today they could be buying on yellow power bank. That's absolutely true. Yeah. And then an hour from now or the following day, it could be buying on rainbow power bank. Power bank. Now that's true. But the truth is, <laughs> that, and to me, the truth is God made us as humans, we're different. He made us because he needed something. He wants to communicate with us. And he wants us to have community. And he wants us to create. And he wants us to do this. When God made a tree, he didn't say, here's a table, here's chairs. Right. He put things on earth and it's up to us. To, to figure expand. it out. Yeah. So it's the same thing with fishing techniques. It's the same thing with anything in life. But here's the thing. God's word is the truth. And it will never change. So when I put that into my fishing, I look at that and say, okay, God made animals. And animals are animals. They have a certain character. And so we're giving away some value and some truth here. When you're fishing for stock fishes, you have to think about where they came from, temperature of water, depth of water, all that makes a difference. Because when they bring them into a lake, there's gonna be a temperature change, they have to acclimate, and the thing is, <laughs> here's something, <laughs> boy, this is worth millions here. All right, I'm loving it. <laughs> so when you have a trout pond, how, how deep do you think those trout ponds are? Hmm, if I had to take a guess, I'd say four feet. I would say six to ten. Okay. And especially the bigger fish. Yeah. You're not, they're not going to be in four feet of water. Right. So you got them in six to ten feet of water. When you release those fish, what depth of water do you think they're going to be in? They're probably going to return to what they're used to. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Because they're animals. They're yeah. fish. Yeah. So with that being said, they're ballast and everything else. The smaller ones are different than the big ones because they're more, oh, what I'd say, adaptable. They can adapt really quick. Where the big ones can't. They have a buoyancy, they have everything else, so they're gonna be in that depth of water yeah. until they act. Yeah. And then from then, then they'll go to deeper waters. But so with that being said, when you have a stocking, that's why I fish one pole close in all the time. Yes, makes sense. Because then you have you have a better and and bigger chance of getting one of those big ones. Yeah, because they're gonna be in that depth of water. Exactly. They're used to that. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, however, year, two years, whatever it is, anything that you do, again, creatures are predictable. <laughs> they can, they don't, you know, you're not going to see, see any animal make a piece of furniture out of a piece of wood. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's God true. Made, God made them a certain way. That's all they are. And they're going to be what they are. Yeah. So you need to think outside, outside the bubble and look inside the bubble at the same time and say, okay, it sounds kind of quirky, but think like a fish. Speak like the fish that you're doing, even out in the ocean. When you're putting bait out in salt water, do you want to throw a bait out there that's flimsy and floppy? No, you get the bait that's going to be lively, and those are the baits that are going to get Looks up. natural, right. Exactly. Those yeah, and that you... take off, sw that swim away from the boat as fast as they can, those are the ones that get hit 90% of the time. Absolutely, so, absolutely. So again, you have to think like a fish. We're a lot more smarter and intelligent than animals are. And so this is why I tell people, back to confidence and faith. Look at the truth, know what you're going against, and you know, it's even something with like working on a car, something goes bad. They don't have a brain, but we get all frustrated. <laughs> on mechanics. That's and true. And we get all, and you know what I think I learned? And this is what I say with my class. I teach my kids this. If you want to get somewhere in life, if you want to have something, if you want to be, the be, do, and have, we're going back to that. If you want to be something, find somebody who's getting what you want and make them your best friend. Copy them, make them your best friends. And now times, the way things are at, and I'm, it took me a while to learn this. You know, people say, 
money, money is time. Time is money. That's absolutely false. You cannot pay for time. And so with that being said, if you want to get somewhere, the shortcut that you're going to do is get in a coaching program. Whatever it is you want in life, get in a coaching program. And people say, I can't afford it. Well, then you can't afford to be what you want to be. Yeah. And it might cost thousands. It might do this. How bad do you want it? Yeah. How bad do you want it? Exactly. And, you know, I don't know how many... I get so many people with the classes and say, Carrie, can I just fish with you a couple times? And I hate to be rude, but no, I would be ruining your blessing. Because something about money, when you put money towards something, especially your hard work, you're going to you're gonna make it happen. Or you it's, are. It's going to soak in more. Yes. So I tell people, I would be stealing your blessing. Yeah. Because for you to do anything in life, to be, do, and have, it takes time and money too, but time's more important. And it's over and over and over and over and until it becomes first nature. Yeah. I don't believe in second nature. It's first nature. It's either part of your life or it's not. Yeah. It's what do you want? You make that decision. Right. And so in today's world, everybody wants everything easy. And you know what? I want things easy too. But that's not reality. That's right. It's not reality. No, you're absolutely so, right. I mean, I uh, to use an example, there's certain podcasters that I watch and I watch their interviewing technique and I study it and and I make them my model or there's right. other other things that that hey that is a really you see somebody who's excelling at something you want to excel at right and you you you, you, <coughs> you know you take their example exactly. and you follow that and it takes a long time and a lot of hard work you know, I mean, and you know I'm gonna tell you this Phil this is what I share with people at church one of our biggest problems especially us men is what I'm talking about, our ego. We were meant to, to be rulers. We were meant to be head of household. We're hunters. And one of the hardest problems I've had is surrendering because we want to take care of our family. We want to be the protector. And sometimes, and that's why I just learned this a year ago, sometimes you just got to breathe. Sometimes you just got to get away from everything breathe and say god help me be still yeah and especially in california um everything's go 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 yeah it is and i stopped working at my job in april it's been a year i'm still having to work at slow down breathe and one of the things that i talked to colby about this late one of my goals working with the elliott family um they're such great people i can't express it enough we're fa their family. To me. Yes. And one of the things I want to do at Santa Ana River Lakes is make it a place for family. And, you know, even this kids event that you got coming up, my whole thing is to have a family be able to come here and get away from their work and all their problems and all their issues and just focus on their family. Yeah. And spend time. It's a perfect place, right? Yeah. yeah. You might not even catch a fish, but where can you drive up to your spot, relax. Yeah. Have, you know, have camp out. Have we even opened up an RC track now? I so see you, that. You got an RC track. And, well, there's something else going on that I'm not going to give away. Oh <laughs> you darn! To, you're going to have to wait for the future for that. All this right, one. we'll come back and do another. Podcast. But there's an RC track. There's a fish out pond, which most of the fish out ponds are closed now. Mount Baldy, all these places, Happy Jack. I don't know if you remember Happy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Back then, they're all closed. They're, they're all closed down. Yeah. And so I, there might be a couple open out that I don't know of. But you got that, and then you got the lakes to fish in, the two lakes, and yeah, it gets crowded sometimes. But, you know, it's close to the freeway, which is probably the worst thing, but still, it's a getaway, and it's, 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 a, it's a place for family. And so to me, this is what I got with Kobe about. I want to make this a place of solitude, um, of, of just a place, boy, I don't know how to explain it. But just a place you could come and an escape, yeah, it's right, an escape. to get away from the Amen. craziness out there. Amen. And yeah. I already feel it with all the bird life around here. A good friend like you, <laughs> who I haven't seen for many, many yeah. years, it's peaceful. At the same time, it's peaceful. There's something inside you and I right. that's like, are we gonna get a bite? <laughs> you know, are we gonna get a big trout? Yeah. Uh, so you got those two dynamics kind of playing with each other, and I think you're well on your way here in the Elliott family. I've known Craig for many years and Colby. They're great people, they're, and they're great. and they're going to make this happen. Yeah, yeah. No, we're, we we um, have, have. 
I call us visionaries now. Um, it's something that we've been working, uh, well, I've been working on with Kobe and the, well, the Alex family, but making this place family. And so um, we would like to see it here also, um, what we're talking about in the, fu in the future is trying to make a vendor day where everybody comes out, make it a family day. You have your people that have all their baits or rods, whatever the case may be. Um, and I would like to do, just concentrate on trout fishing. Yeah. If they want to do catfish, that's beyond my, that's... Uh, beyond I'm, your I'm area not, of expertise. Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm not a catfishman. Right. I don't claim to be. Right. But when it comes to trout fishing, I think I could help out. Yeah. Um, so... S speaking of that, um, if, if I'm just getting into trout fishing, do I go out and spend three hundred dollars on a rod and reel, or do I get a twenty dollar <laughs> rod and reel? Or, you know, I'm I'm not really sold on it yet. I'm 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 thinking about being a trout fisherman. I'm speaking for people out there. What What do you recommend? Do you have a favorite reel and rod? Well, I do, but you can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell it. Well, well, let here. me hear. What, what does it cost? Is it like a five hundred dollar outfit? Well, whoa, it, that was a big fish that jumped out of the lake. Billy what was that, that Bobby? Something, you man. might want to break away. I think Billy's got a big one. Where? Oh, shoot. Is you that a big one, Billy? Yeah, might want to. You want to take a break? Yeah. Okay. Take a look Let's at do it. Fish. Oh, come on. Oh, he lost it. Farmer. <laughs> we were coming with the camera. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get the second one. <laughs> Well, we had some excitement. Building yeah, we did. Five, we thought we had a finish. <laughs> so you know all these guys here, right? Well, not everybody, but uh, yeah. This gentleman over here Bernard, is... Bernard, um, you know, talking about Bernard, we'll get into this real quick. Um, the pole holders that we have here, Bernard was uh, made some for me to get started. And then he was making uh, a hook remover for me with a drumstick. And we were fishing Corona a lot. And... Um, I dropped mine in the water and I said, Bernard, I need another one. He said, I can't make you another one, Carrie. So I said, shoot. So the next day, I worked at a plastic company where I make my the hook removers. And it wasn't a prayer, but in a way, I guess it was, because I literally said out loud, God, there's got to be a better a better way. And the reason why I said that, when I was on my flow tube, I just bought one of the red ones um, to take the bait out. And when I did that, I pushed it through the trout, and I felt something snag my thumb, and I thought it was the gill plate. And I'm like, what the heck? So I went to go pull back, and I heard my drag go. And again, number 10 owner hook, so not that big of a deal. Yeah. And it got, had me hooked, and I said, God, there's got to be a better way. So as I'm doing inventory with my material out in the shop, I said the same thing. God, there's got to be a better way. And next thing I know, here's this vision. I mean, like that. Here's a vision. Showed me everything. Stepped in my office, sat down. I said, God, it can't be that. Drew it up, gave it to my die guy. He made it, I think I got it back three or four days later. So I made it. How one, excited. One of my buddies took took it to Glen Helen, had his kids, I think Valerie was nine, ten at the time, and a couple of the cousins or something like that. And they said something like they caught 60, 70 bluegill, and only two of them, well, they were too small, so they died. Yeah. But he said, other than that, they used it, and it worked real fine. Well, when we did this... I was going to Corona Lake and, uh, how would you say, field testing it, and people couldn't believe how easy it was to come out. And so with that being said, when, when they would take it out, they'd let go and the hook would, would fly. So I end up going to look for a clip. Well, the size that I had, Pentel, Pentel has a patent on all of them. Yeah. So I had to go a little bit bigger to get a clip, and the clip was made for many, several reasons, to keep it in your pocket, if you spin it, then it'll stay and close, so that way it'll stay on the line and you can let go of it and come gotcha. back to it later. Gotcha. Also, it's used for great. Also, it's used for unclogging, so if you have power bait stuck in there, you can clean oh, it. Oh, perfect! And then there's another one that I just found out. If you spin it towards the middle and you put your hook on there, you can use it to spin and tie your knot. Wow! Hold it down and tighten it. That's really cool. <laughs> so, so there's something. Let me fix that mic there just a little. There you go. There's something different. I mean. You learn something new about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But so with that being said, that's how this came came about. So Fishing Legend started out with the hook remover, had some fishing apparel, um, but now I'm doing the How to Catch a Monster Trout uh, clinic to help people. Because I want fishing, any type of sport, even hunting in California, they're trying to get rid of everything. I know. 
and it really upsets me because anything that has to do with family, they're, they're killing it. Yeah. They're just divide, they're divided. I couldn't agree more. I mean, you know, they're taking away some of these great opportunities for families to come together and right. be one with nature. And, Amen. Yeah, and it's just, it's it's brutal. So, you know, we haven't even mentioned this yet. How do people contact you if they want to learn how to catch a trophy trout, a giant trout? They go to my website. It's www www.fishinglegend.net Fishing and Legend Singular? Fishing no Legend S. Singular. Fishinglegend.net And then there's uh, you can contact me from there and then from there you just put I'm interested in, in a program and anyone that asks how much it costs excuse me um, my start which I say is a half day is at $199, $199 but I tell everybody I can't give you a set price because it depends where you're at yeah. If you're starting at very, very minimal Basic. nothing, yeah. you got to, oh, and this was the question that you asked. Yeah, the rod and reel. R rod and reel, tackle, all that other stuff. I have a starter kit that I put together um, that's $50. That's my cost, and I don't make any money on it just to get you started. It's a tackle box that has the uh, hooks, several weights, swivels, the beads that I use. Um, I put a bottle of rainbow and a bottle of chartreuse garlic power bait and a pack of white uh, power worms. And those are just the basics. You can expand from there, you know, do more. Fishing poles and reels. The one that you were mentioning, how much is your, is your the one you say it's very costly? <laughs> well, I have some Phoenixes, the, which you'll see here, my Ken cores, they don't even make them anymore, yeah. so they're priceless. Yeah. Those are my bait rods. Yeah. Um, but you're talking, uh, Phoenixes, you're probably starting right around two hundred dollars a rod. Yeah, and and up, you can go to. Uh, the, for my students, I've been researching rods, and they have like the Akuma SST and the uh, Akuma Californian, and to me, for starting rods, they're like fifty, sixty dollars, and they're okay. You can start with that. Yeah. Um, as far as reels go, there's a lot of companies. Daiwa's got some reels in the ninety dollar range. Uh, uh, Shimano uh, has some too, the Sedonas. Uh, now they have another one called Nisi or something, but you can, you can get them, and that's a start. Yeah. And to start, I would say you could probably do that. You're talking about 120, 125 bucks for a rod and reel. But here's the thing you need two of them. <laughs> yeah. Because with my system, you're going to fish a night crawler and power bait. And then if you want a jig, then you could take just a two pole fishing you know with the fishing license here it's you don't need a fishing license right but you can still fish with only two poles so if you want to learn how to jig you can do that too but the limit here is two poles per angler yeah right, right. but no fishing license no fishing which is license. great yeah yeah so um that would be the start um with my system um i'm getting more pole pole holder pole holders made i can't say how critical these pole holders are uh-huh um when you see the system and how it works, then people get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, again, that's something when you take the class, we find two th find two things. The we have some pole holders at the tackle shop that you can get for like twenty dollars. It doesn't work with my system. Yeah. But it's the only one that we found. So I have uh, somebody. I'm, I'm actually working with one of my students to make my pole holders, and they're going to be a little costly. Yeah, um, they're probably going to be about fifty dollars a pop, but again, um, it's, they're essential. It, it's outside. Yeah, it, yeah, it's essential for the presentation and everything. I'm Present, guessing, right? Everything, um, how the fish take it, how to read the yeah. bobber, uh, which we call a strike indicator. Um, all this stuff is critical. Um, if you want to, when I say how to catch a monster trout, you always have a pole out there uh, for that one big one. And the other pole can get a big one, and even the, the pole for the monster trout might get some small fish. Um, but it's just a system. Can you define monster trout for me? Is it ten pounds and above, <laughs> or, or what is a monster? Uh, you know, that's a question I ask my students. Yeah. Because my first, uh, I had uh, brothers and another gentleman on my first class, and the first fish we caught was a six uh, six pound ten ounce. Uh, trout. That's a big trout, right? Well, and my, so my first question to them is, is that a monster? Yeah, trout? yeah. <laughs> and, and their answer is, F yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, good, 
But to me... It's in the eye of the beholder in some amen. ways, right? Amen. Yeah. I mean, you know, the thing that got me doing this, I remember the first time I caught my first fish. It was just something within me that I knew that it was going to be part of my life. It's something I always wanted to do. Well, my daughters, my oldest daughter, Chandra, oh my gosh, she's a great fisherman. Yeah. And just seeing her, with, and, and even seeing her every day catch a fish. When I see our, my students, um, a lot of them, you know, catch a lot of two, three pounders. Um, so to me, what is a monster trout to you? And until they hook up to it and see it and feel it and fight it, then they'll say, yeah, that's a monster trout. Yeah. Um, but it could be a two pound to somebody. It could be a three pound to somebody. For me personally. Yeah. <laughs> Let me guess. Let me guess. Um, that would qualify as a monster. I would say 10 pounds and above. I mean, there now you I go. know you've got a bit much bigger than that, but that sounds like a big trout to me who's not much of a trout right. guy. I'm not, you know. That, that, that's probably about right. Yeah, right? I mean, that's a ten, big ten trout. 10 pounds and up. But you, you know what? This is what I share with people. A monster trout to me, I'm an adrenaline junkie. So a monster trout to me. 18. No, oh. it could, because it could be a six pound trout that doesn't want to give up. Yeah, okay. It's about the it's fight. It's about the fight. It's about the fight. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, my 20 pounder, I got to admit, it fought good. The best fighting fish I've had here at Santa Ana River Lakes was a 16 and a half pound trout. Same thing with my daughter. Yeah. And that thing took off. It was so funny. I was fishing the nets over here. It was going so fast. It landed on the other side of the net on the beach on the land flopped around a couple times the two pound test line i'm thinking fish broke out yeah and it flopped back in the water because the people fishing there couldn't believe it and they were laughing it flopped back in the water and it was still on and i'm like wow the one of my daughter took and uh, got in this big lake it went halfway out into the lake did but, it yeah because you can't stop them yeah you just gotta you know, yeah take your time and be patient um this is the other thing i like about fishing with two pound test line is it keeps you humble and what I mean by that is a lot of times when I, when I teach people how to fish and get something big, your adrenaline starts going and it's like, breathe, take a breath, relax, because you're going to lose it. You start getting all you hyper, jerky-jerky. Yeah, jerky yeah and, right. And so it's like, relax, breathe. You know? and, and so to me, to this day, Phil, I still have to tell myself that. <laughs> I'm yeah, because you. <laughs> you, get, you love this so much, you get excited. Yeah, right? I mean, it's just a kid in us. And yeah, you know what? Exactly. We should never grow up. <laughs> I've managed not to do that. <laughs> I mean, there's as my wife. Yeah, as adults, I mean, I think the difference between an adult and a kid is adult. There's a responsibility, and that's the word. There's a responsibility. But when it comes to kid, that's what keeps us alive. Yeah. Have fun. Have yeah. joy. And Don't be childish. Be childlike. And amen. Appreciate the amen. the fun things in life, yeah. and you know. We go, my wife and I go to 22nd Street Landing for lunch, you know, every once in a while. There's not a time, you know, she'll go into the bathroom. There's not a time that I'm not hiding outside the bathroom right. door when she walks out and I <laughs> try to scare And she looks at me like, you're a kid. And I, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I'm almost 70 years old. I'm still pulling this crap. You know, it's brutal. But there's something fun about it, right? Well, yeah. And you, know, you know, I can't, one of the elders at my church. <laughs> <laughs> we were, you know, I was saying that we do that and that keeps us going. He's like, don't do that to your wife. I'm like, what are you talking about? That keeps, no, you don't treat your wife like that. I'm like, why? That's just, you know, I don't agree with anything that others say. Yeah. It, it depends That's on That's one you, that we're no, not going to agree with. Yeah, I mean, no one's 100% correct, but I mean, that's your relationship, but I'm the same way, you know. Yeah. Why not have fun with it, right? <laughs> it, it keeps things... Uh, I will tell you, just, just since we're on that subject, I do that to her all the time. We were in Mexico City, and I was sick, and I had just scared the living you-know-what out of her. <laughs> and she goes, I'll go to the pharmacy, and then I'll be back. So she takes off, hear the door slam, and I get up. You know how you kind of talk to yourself once in a while? I'm looking out. We're at the Zocalo in Mexico City. I'm going, oh, boy, I don't feel good. And then I, like, walk. Back. Well, she didn't leave. She stayed inside, and I didn't realize. She, I almost jumped out the balcony she got me so bad so <laughs> and then I, I laughed you know belly laughed after that i thought it was great you gotta have fun you know our house in lake elsinore uh we always came in through the, through the garage and as soon as you come through the garage I, we had a, 
a downstairs bathroom there. <laughs> I would climb up on the sink <laughs> and she'd come around the corner and scare. And you know, her thing was, why do you do that? Well, next thing I know, a couple, well, a little bit later, she's not climbing on the sink, but she'll scare me. And I'll look like, uh, uh, oh man, and especially, you know, in, in today's world, you're on the go. I don't know about you. You're on the go, go so much. 24-7. Your head's going 100 miles an hour. Yeah. It's still, I, I, I stopped my job in end of April. It's almost been a year. I'm still going 120 miles an hour. Yeah. Still trying too. to slow down after all those years of doing it. And she scared me a couple of times. And at first, you know, I get, <laughs> I'll jump and say, and then I th take a breath and say, you know what? You got to laugh. Yeah. I, yeah, I, like, exactly. I can't believe you did that. Yeah. I can't I know. I like the that. fact that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I'll give her a hug, you know, and say, oh, well, good. You can loosen up. And you know what? Oh, boy, I can't say it. That's what this is about here, loosening up, getting away from everything. Right. You know, joking around. Bernard over there. Yeah. Uh, Billy, we all joke around. Uh, and you just talked about when you get a big fish and you hook it, breathe. Yeah. Relax a little bit, right? And yeah. then do your thing. Follow yeah. what you've been taught, how to catch a fish. Right. I mean, even you know, when it gets crowded here, one of the things that I teach to people, and they, again, you can't, you know, do this. YouTubers, you know, they show you stuff. But when you get a big fish and it's really crowded here, I always tell people the same thing on the boat. You'll hear people say, stay in front of your fish, keep them straight. And over here, the big ones, most of the time when they're biting, they just take off to the side. Yeah. So you need to learn how to go over and under everybody's poles. And the longer the pole, the harder it is because you have to make sure that you have tension on yeah. it too. Yeah. So it doesn't get away and spit that hook. So that's even an art. But here's what I tell everybody, especially my students. Um, a lot of them have been brothers, and then they bring their dad, their family to it. And I say it's teamwork, guys. It's teamwork. Even the netting, spotting each other. Is that fish under? Is it over? When it comes to netting, even netting the fish, uh, there's a way to do that. Yeah. Without scaring, having the fish be scared. And I'm sure you can say to your neighbors, like these gentlemen that are on both sides of us here, I'm sure you can say, hey, I've got a really big fish, kind of new at this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over again. You know, if you have a suggestion, I'm all ears. And right. It looks to me like these guys are going to jump yeah, right in and help you out. There are. And then, you know, <laughs> then there's people, too, that know when you have a big fish, they just sit there and let everything <laughs> be in the way. Yeah, good luck. Um, but like I said, you know, having here with partners, uh, it, 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 to me, it's teamwork. When I share with people on setting up your pole, if there's two people, you have two poles. So you have four weapons to catch a fish. So with that being said, one pole should always have the night crawl. If the second person wants night crawl too, that's fine. But then you're cutting your chances of finding out what, what the fish are going to bite. Yeah. So you find out what you're using, you mix it up. If there's something they're biting on more often than not, then you're going to switch up to that. So everything's teamwork. Yes. Everything's working together. With my workshop, when I started this working with families to work with their kids, it's about community. Um, and, and when I say that, going back to Santa and River Lakes, I remember when I was younger, neighbors would watch you or friends would watch you and they were allowed to spank you. If my kid gets out of hand, oh, I remember. give him a whooping. Yeah. In Hawaii, we say dirty licking. Yeah. And that was family. And so I wanted to be the same way because of this crazy world. You got two people, you know, father and mother working. If the kid wants to go fishing and go with another family, it's like, here you go. You know, can my kid go fishing with you? Absolutely. Yeah. Come, come along. And it shouldn't even be like that. One of the things that you'll find out if you ever get to know me, I have no friends. I have absolutely zero friends. You're either my family or you're not. Yeah. That's just the way I am. Yeah. Yeah. And so to me, it's about heart. And I could trust you a hundred percent without even thinking about anything that's family to me yes and even my close family i can't do that with so like yeah with right my, with my blood family right but that's the way i am you're either family or you're not so you're of the our way which is helping others um you know in, in, in back to bibles jesus wrapped it up the two greatest commandments love your lord your god with all your mind body spirit soul and strength the strength part is you takes a lot of strength the second commandment is unto like the first love your neighbor as you love yourself well how's that like the first one 
And, and again, just recently doing a lot of studying, how can you love yourself if you don't put God first? How can you show love if you don't know God's love? We only know what our parents have taught us, the world's taught us, and that's not the agape love that, that God speaks about. Right. John 3.16, so God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That's a sacrifice I don't know anybody could do. I know. But you know what? I'll tell you what, excuse my language, I do my damnedest to do that. Yeah. And I tell people, I would give my life for you. I really would, uh, if the situation came up to it. So with that being said, that's one of the things with community that I say, people share the same values. You don't have to believe in God. That's the, I, I don't push that on people. But if you're going to be around me, it's that humanity part. It's community. It's where your heart's at. Yes. And so to me, that's what my life is that I call successful. Success to me isn't about making money. It's, it's about no, finding out what your calling is through God and doing it. To I me, that's success. Completely understand. And so a lot of people are after money. California, it's all about money. It's all about, no, what's your calling? And a lot of people say, what is my calling? What do you love to do? Yeah, exactly. That's your calling. Exactly. What are you good at? What do you like to do? How can you benefit <laughs> others? Right. All of those things. You know, this whole, I've just started this podcast two years ago, and mm -hmm. we're moving up on 2 million views and over wow. 210,000 hours consumed. But when we first started there were guys saying yeah this Friedman Adventures family mm -hmm. it's coming together and I scoffed at it at first just internally and now it's become a real thing and right. the people in the family the people that watch us and support us are all really good people I don't know whether they believe in God or they don't believe in God whether they're Catholic or Christian or Jewish or some Buddhist other thing or... <laughs> yeah I don't know but I do know that 99% of them are really good people. Mm -hmm. When somebody asks a question on our YouTube channel, there's never somebody on there saying, oh, you, you know, you don't know that. It's always helpful. Mm -hmm. I say, I, I look out there and I say, I need, we're doing a clothing drive for Mexico. We're going to take it to an impoverished area down there. 22nd Street Landing is so full of clothing. We just shipped down thousands. Yeah. And so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's fun. It's so rewarding to have that wrapped up in fishing or some outdoor activity that you truly love. Right. Right. Man, it doesn't get any better than that, Carrie. Yeah, and that's yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, no, and it took me, you know, it took me a while to do, you know, when I was supposed to go to Hawaii and it didn't work out again for the second time, um, I made a prayer and said, God, what is, it, what is it you want me to do? And I heard a voice saying, well, what do you love to do? I love sharing the word. I love my family. I love fishing and I love cooking. And I hear this voice, so, <laughs> and I'm like, so I don't get it. So, so why don't you do what you love? Yeah. And my thing, well, how can I make money about this? You know, doing this and doing that. And, and you know, Craig and I talk with the lake. A lot of trout fishermen, they're a different breed. And so our thing was, my thing was. The how, so, how so? How are trout fish? I mean, because I know, like, you talk about shark fishermen, they're a different breed. Right. They're like, I can tell you how weird they are. But, or, you know, they right. have <laughs> A different character. Yes, definitely. A uh, guy shows up on the pier with a knife between his teeth <laughs> at midnight. You know, he's a shark fisherman, right? He's not out there to catch a Corvina or something. Yeah. So how are traffic? What are they? Are they, well, what kind of people are they? I mean, it's changing now, now, now that people are starting to jig and drop shot and things like that. But for the most part, it, you know, when I say that, it's different from bass fishermen. Uh, different from saltwater fishermen. Um, again, we're talking, we, we could go into egos. Uh, but with trout fishermen, for the most part, it's the bait, we'll, we'll call them bait and waders. You sit there and you're sitting, you know, sitting there and have That's your true. bait. That's true. That's very sit true. sit there and do that. Now, again, things are changing. People are actually starting to jig more and stuff, catching, catching fish. But um, they just here to sit, you know, relax sometimes uh, they could just come here and not care whether they catch a fish so um, with that being said it's just they're just different characters but this is what you know I was going through a battle with it and trying to put I'm still I'm still fine-tuning things putting a price on the workshops like I said I personalize it 
it's all on the person. And so my question to them is, what results are you looking for? Because before we even get started, yeah. if I don't think I can help you, then I'm not going to yeah, right. charge you anything because I'm not going to work with you. Right. But that's if, very, it, very sage of you. I think well, that's smart. Well, it, it, it's just, you know. Is the goal to get a 20 pound trout today? Because if it is, Right. Yeah, I'm not your guy. But right. if the goal is to learn something, have fun, and start maybe a new hobby that will take you into the future, right. here I am. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what I tell people with my system and technique, I guarantee them 100%. Well, now that <laughs> the, the, the season's winding down here, but within their lifetime, and the trout season's here at uh, ending here soon with Santa Ana River Lake, but it's not up in the Sierras. It's not anywhere else. Yeah, right. And, you know, I can guarantee that they can get big fish here because I know what's what we stock here. Yeah. This lake is so packed and stacked with big fish. It's, yeah. It's insane. Like, well, how big? Uh, I say there's still a couple out there, 18 to 20 pound. Wow. Range. And I say a couple, two to three. Yeah. Uh, 15s, there's, then, then you start getting to 13s, but there's a lot of 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 11, 12 pounds. Wow. Somewhere. Yeah. And so a lot of people call that monster trout. Um, but so to me, with the technique, you're going to, again, time. You have to go, you have to practice, you have to do it over and over. And it's not every day you, you're going to get a lot of bites. Um, and Got to so, be patient, obviously, yeah, right? Yeah, well, patient. And so, but my thing, we can't go, I can't get back and stress it enough. Confidence. And with that confidence in time, uh, my first group that I told you that was with us, uh, Robert caught the 6'10", Raphael got like a pound and a half or two pounds. The second time they got a couple pound and a half to two and a half pounds. Third time out, somewhere around here, he cut his biggest one, eight and a half pounds. Nice. And that was the third time out. And he's like, Kerry, he was like, he was, I knew this was gonna work. So he, he had the confidence, he saw the system. And I think we just did a video two weeks ago. I had a student, Dean, very first time out, picked him up from the Pacific Coast show. And I think he was kind of doubtful. He's like, Kerry, you talk a good story, but I can't believe you put your money, you know, your yeah. words are true. Yeah. Until he, his first fish was an eight and a half. And then Raphael, uh, he actually got the day off. So he said, Kerry, can I, you know, I got the day off. I said, come fish with us, you know, improve your technique. Yeah. And that's, I, I always invite people, if I'm here, my students to come so I could make sure that they're not getting into bad habits. Yeah. It's like martial arts. If you do bad habits for too long to try to correct it, it's 10 times more work. Yes. So, uh, with that being said, he did that. He got a 13 and a half pound. Dang. And it's like, dude, now you just set another bar. Yeah. <laughs> 13 no and a half kidding. Pound, 13 and a half pound. That's he called great. his brother and said, hey, I got a 13 and a half. I beat, you know, the eight and a half, he beat, he beat uh, Robert six, 6.10. And then now he's got a 13 and a half. It's like, that's a high bar. Yeah, you know, no that's kidding. That's a high bar to set. I said, but still, it's, it's, it's the fun about it. Yeah. And you know what? Oh, boy, I can't say this enough. Goal oriented. I don't believe that you could have a passion for something and not be goal oriented. Yeah. I don't think that. I, I, I tell people that if if you have a passion for something, you're setting bars, and and so with that being said, the other thing I found out goes back to time. In the beginning, you should put a time limit on your goals. If you don't make it, at least you have a goal. And then that will express how much time and how much effort you have to do to do it. Because yes. if you say, I'm going to catch a 10 pound trout and you go once a year. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, to exactly. Me like, uh, you know, I don't know. I think you got to change your priorities. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you yeah. Know, so same thing in saltwater fishing, yeah. you know, you're not going to get it. You got to go a lot. Bluefin. Yeah. Talk about bluefin. Oh, how many times you've been out there? The I'll schools are boiling yeah. all over the place. And they won't bite. <laughs> And there's trips where you drive and never see one. Which one's <laughs> worth? They're both bad. <laughs> exactly. They are. That's so true. So there's also something here called lightning trout. Correct. T care to tell people about the, is there a difference in terms of targeting lightning trout? Are they better eating? How big do they get? They're colorful and beautiful, aren't they? Oh, yeah. They're bright orange for the most part. Sometimes they're kind of palish orange. But that is Mount Lassen's uh, special breed, I, I guess you could say. Um, pound for pound, I think they do fight harder in generality. Um, as far as the taste, um, like I told you before, I'm from Hawaii, but that shouldn't matter. I'm a raw fish eater. Yeah. But when I Me do too. eat I trout, love raw fish. Trout, I don't know, trout, 
are fishy <laughs> to me. But the lightning trout just have a smoother, buttery, more buttery taste, I guess you could say, not as trout, trouty. Yeah. And so I'll eat that. Um, not all the time, but I mean, I'll eat that compared to the rainbow trout. When I, when I cook rainbow trout, um, I have a, a secret recipe uh, that I kind of vamped up. A lot of people in uh, Hawaii, when we catch what we call umu, the parrotfish, they'll put mayonnaise over it and bake it. Oh, right. Um, do you do that with the trout? Um, I do a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I put butter, mayonnaise, soy sauce, Worcester sauce. Oh, my God. Um, uh, boy, there's a lot of things I do, and then I top it off with uh, finely sliced lemons, and then uh, at the end of it, I just cut fresh green onions and put it on top for the flavor. Yeah, eat that with white rice, and then I can eat that. But you're really, <laughs> you're really adding a bunch of stuff. To it, so. Yeah, yeah, it sounds but, like it. Uh, but no, but everybody loves it when I make that. So, um, and the, again, uh, white rice and, and soy sauce. I mean, even my barracuda. <laughs> Real quick, um, my in-laws are. My wife's side of the family came down from Arkansas, and they were going to a picnic. And they're, and I said, you guys want some fish? I just went, bar tells you how long ago it was. Uh, barracuda were biting a lot. So we were talking 2012, I think, or something like that. So I didn't know these people from Arkansas knew it, but they said, Carrie, what kind of fish is it? And I go, why? And she goes, because we don't like barracuda. And it's like, really? And I said, okay. So I had some calico bass and I had barracuda. <laughs> Well, I cut the strips, I cut them both the same, wrapped them up, and here's another value, guys. It has to be Hidden Valley Bacon Ranch. You can use the regular ranch yeah. if you want. But you don't even have to soak it that much. You just put it in there, wrap it up in tinfoil, put it on the barbecue just enough to cook it. Oh, my God, it's so good. Barracuda. Barracuda. Yeah. Is that filleted? <laughs> yeah. You just uh -huh. cut, after it's filleted, you put it in strip. Yeah. It. Um, Cut them to about six inch strips. I'll try that. And uh, t salt and pepper, of yeah. course. But they they went there and I said, okay, well, here's some fish for you to take to your barbecue. And I told my wife, I said, I'm interested to see what they say when they come back. Yeah. So they came back. They woke up later in the woke up later in the morning. So I said, Susan, how, how, how was that the fish that you guys had? I said, Carrie, everybody loved it. They couldn't get enough of it. And I go, really? And she goes, yeah. And I go, she goes, what kind of fish was that? <laughs> you couldn't wait to tell her. <laughs> you have to believe it. It was barracuda. You should have seen the look of Bambi and headlights. It was so funny. That's They're a like, funny You're thing. You're kidding me. I said, it all depends how you cook it. Yeah. But barracuda does have a nice flaky texture. Yeah, it does. It, when you cook it right. I made ceviche out of it, and it was good. I made all kinds of yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's freshness and how you prepare it, right? Yeah, yeah. you got to cut that bloodline out. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's on any fish. Pretty but, much, uh, yeah. But no, I like it too, but I like it more on the, barbe uh, on the barbecue um, by itself, and you just got to be careful because it'll fall apart and fall through the grill. But yeah. I like that. It's got to have a little bit of burnt flavor. The trout that I was telling you about how I make it, it's a two-part system, uh, depending how thick of a cut and how big the trout are you put it in the oven for so long to where the edges are white and then you put it on a broiler broiler to burn the mayonnaise yeah so it gives it a certain flavor. oh that sounds good yeah, it is good <laughs> i'm getting hungry it's almost like yeah i know what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing to me here you're trying to mess up my keto diet actually that's on the keto diet <laughs> yeah, so i'm good it, it is so anything else that you would care to say to the folks out there about is that oh i thought our rod was bit it's was not it? it's been? not no Thought it was. Yeah, we could probably um, recast it. Anything out. else that you want in terms of a tip or just invite people to come out, no. go to your website, meet you, come to Santa Ana River Lakes experience, the peace uh, and tranquility, yeah, weekdays. I, I, yeah, weekdays. Um, and that's hard because, you know, most people get weekends off. Yeah. Um, you know what? Everyone's going to hate me out there in, in camera land. Um, but I say take a time off, even with your kids. It doesn't hurt to take them out of school for a day. Come on the weekday where it's more quality time, less people out here, and give them an experience because things right now, <laughs> boy, we're gonna open up a big can of worms here. Open it up. Carrie. Cell phones, video games. Get away from that. Get away, bring your kids out here. Enjoy the outdoors. Enjoy things that are basic. Enjoy things that don't uh, but I don't know say uh, infringe on the experience yeah. here, right? That are going to ruin it. Go back to basics. Got to you know, a lot of people have cried wolf. 
and I'm just going to say this out right now. This world is headed in a direction, and it's been doing it, but it's coming sooner than anybody knows. And when that time comes and we have to go back to basics, everyone's going to be lost. You know, power gets cut out. I don't know. <coughs> I've had power cut off for, at my place a couple of times for five hours. And even with five hours, it's like, oh, my gosh, no light. I know, no right? No refrigerator. It's the end no of the TV. world. Yeah. yeah, it's like the end of the world. And it's yeah. like, no, but bringing kids out here, teaching them how to start a fire, um, the, the fishing part, survival, just the basic instincts of what we were created to do. Yeah. And everything now is so electronic and gadget that when it comes to when we have to use our natural instincts, we're lost. We're lost. Yep. And so I say this is uh, fishing to me is a natural sport. It's innocent, um, yet it's passionate. If you really love the outdoors, being one with nature, one with God, a lot of things with my workshop that I teach people is how to read the sky, how to read the animals, how to read the birds, how to read the fish themselves, the conditions, um, all that stuff you put together. And it's, well, I, I, I don't know how to put it. It's just raw instinct. It's, it's who, who God made us to be. And he created us and made us to take care of the earth and to communicate with them and help mankind. Um, and I don't know, that's all I can say is come out here and enjoy it and, and share the experience. Um, well said, my friend. And more, <laughs> you know what? Here we are fishing, and more than anything, I haven't seen you for a decade or two. I don't know how long it's well, been. it's probably been, I haven't done the Fred Hall show for five years or so. It's probably been about seven years. It probably has been, it's yeah. Been there. It's good to see you again. It's Spend always time a with such a, a person who is so, doing such good work in the community and bringing the word that you value so much. You're not ashamed or shy about talking about your belief and your faith. That's all great stuff, and it can only make people better. Well, that, I, I, that's my mission, my goal. That's what he's called. And you know what? It's, uh, you're looking good, my friend. Thank you. Uh, you I walked you, around China for three years. And, uh, that's what you were saying. I yeah. mean, last I saw you, I mean, you've toned down quite quite a bit. Well, I was, uh, what do you think? Let's see, I'm too, I was almost 200 pounds heavier at one point in time in my life. Really? Yeah. Wow. I was over four. Wow. I was a big boy in those well, days. Well, when I first met you, well, again, when I first met, it was probably 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, I was probably a svelte 350 in those days. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're looking good, and I'm glad. Thank you. You too. You know I want you to be around here for a long time, brother. Me too. I'm, uh, I'm having too much fun now. That's for sure. <laughs> One more thing. Uh -huh. Let's catch some fish. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, uh, Let's get to it. You got it, brother. God Thanks, bless. Gary. God, God bless, bless you. God bless you all. Love you all. Come down and come down and say Whoa, hi. Whoa, that's a beautiful fish. Yes, sir. What'd you catch that on? Uh, Golden State fishing black and red minnow. Ooh. Chris's pond by the nets. And how much did it weigh? 7.5 pounds. Wow, what's your name and my city? Name's, uh, my name's Bill, I'm from Ontario, California. Bill, good job, man. Thank you, bro. All right. It's a beautiful day and the trout are biting at Santa Ana River Lake. Sunny, warm, gorgeous, and the fish are nibbling a little bit. You should come out here and enjoy it. In fact, this Saturday, we'll be here teaching kids to fish. Call Chuck at 310-918-1448. Some excellent lightning trout fishing going on at Santa Ana River Lakes. In fact, it's so wide open, I was able to catch one. All thanks to our great guide, Kerry Guyagas.